Welcome to Asaksa. <laughs> he didn't do it. Okay. <laughs> we nearly got a nice morning welcome there. <laughs> well, there he goes. <laughs> Come on, lady, you're supposed to spray it down. Good morning, good morning. Cloudy Saturday in the Saksa. Not sure how the weather's going to go. I would really like some rain. It looks like it's not really going to happen. So we're probably going to have a close, tight, humid day, but not with the cooling effect of any actual rain. We'll see. No idea. Not to complain. It's been hot, but there's a lot of people out there in some of the areas watching the stream that are a lot hotter than us, obviously. Wildfires, yeah, whatever. So no complaint about here in Tokyo. Good morning, good morning. Oh, he's got his secondary garbage truck today. I think business must be really good for those guys. There's so much, they've got not enough trucks to handle their business, I think. Probably they're doing really well. Has our floater, is it floating lower than it normally does? I don't really think that's possible. Is gravity weak today? I think we've got what we've got. Anyway, good morning. Oh, as you can see, what's on the desk today? The work I've been doing the last little while, the, the hooks I print, of course the carving is long now finished upstairs. We're now onto the third printing batch. Prints have flowed through to the shipping center. They're on the way to people. We got it all figured out. I figured out what to do with the cat spots. We've got one, I guess I can show, can I? Is it okay? If you are waiting for this print and you don't want to see it, if you'd rather get the surprise, then, then close your eyes now. For the rest of you who want to see how it uh, how it turned out, here actually this is one of the reject copies. I've got the ten reject copies here. The rest have flown through to Ome for uh, for shipping. They're gone. This is one of the reject copies. I made a mess in the corner. You know. Spoon, spoon, spoon. It came out okay. I know it's not spectacular. It, as most of these prints in this series, you know, the, at least the ones that I've been assigned to so far are quiet. Some of them, number five, the one Chon San has finished now, and Rei Chan is carving, it's spectacular. It's spectacular. He's gone nuts with the carving. I think they've made like 10 blocks. It's really not, not fair, but whatever. But we're okay here. We're okay. We had the, the repair job was somewhere around here. I can't see it. And the line, remember the, the horizontal line where, where the block was split into two pieces? I have no idea where it is. I can't see that at all. There's no, no horizontal. Even when I hold it up and look at it, I can't see anything going on. So we'll see. We'll see. No crack problems. Not yet. But problems like that, as we said, you know, when we were first seeing that, that we knew that crack problem wasn't going to be a problem in the short term. The concern is over the years, X years, three years, five years, ten years. And this is a rare print for us, not too many these days, get this embossing, which says... It's a very unusual embossing from Moko Hong Kong. It says, carving, printing, buru debido. Both sides. We don't have very many prints like that these days, for sure. So I don't know who's going to get these. It'll be the... How does she send them? She sends them in order of how long people have been subscribers. That's the, you know, the way our invoicing system works. Is it goes through our customer database. When she turns the invoicing on for everybody who's waiting to get this print, it goes through it in, in uh, customer number order, which indicates how long they've, they've been uh, a customer of ours. So the first people to get this, the ones who will get my version, my 75 copies or whatever that I released, will be the oldest customers with us, Albert Anderson, whatever, pe people like this. If you just became a collector last year, you're going to get a follow-up copy. It'll be printed by Suga-san or Ishikawa-san or Rei-chan, the other three printers who are working on these blocks now. So we don't, uh, don't send requests, please. We don't do it that way. 
the billing happens on, on customer age. And then in this case, because I was the first one finished, the earliest people are going to get my version. But, uh, we mods get the scraps. Yes, you guys get yours on the 21st of each month. So <laughs> you're not going to get mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we doing today? Why is this print on my bench? I needed a job to fill in today because we're going out to Ome for the next stream. But I needed a job to fill in today. And just yesterday, we were upstairs with the printers. This print has been assigned to Ishikawa-san. She'll be doing a batch of them. And she said, please, please, please. We've been talking about this for years. She said, please fix the key, the, the sky block. And actually, uh, I don't have a copy to show you. This is a, a reject print from some previous batch. And you can't really see it on this one. But recently, the sky block on this one has been causing the printers tons of trouble. We've got wood grain in the sky. And because the grain we use is always the long way of the block, when the grain in the sky is too pronounced, it looks funny. It shows as vertical lines in the sky. Now, if it's very faint, it's no problem. But this one, and this is not a particularly bad example. This one, some of the lines here have been turning out to get stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes by. Now, normally, the wood grain gets less pronounced in older blocks. As the hardwood just gets softer, the wood in general gets softer over time. And the difference between the, the two grains, the winter and summer grain, gets less. And wood grain generally becomes almost invisible. There's another thing that happens though, when the particular piece of wood, when the summer wood is really soft, the brushing action of our brush on it can abrade the summer wood more than the winter wood. Imagine if this was a block of pine, where the winter wood is rock hard and the summer wood is really soft. As you abrade it, you end up with the hills and valleys on the block. The winter is high and the summer wood gets abraded. And that seems to be what's happening with the block we're using for this. As time is going by, the grain pattern is getting more pronounced. And we've tried grinding it down with a stone, and it just doesn't work. So she's given them and said, please, Dave, we're all struggling with this. Spend some time at your end. Cut us a new block so that we don't have to sweat this so much. There will be fewer rejected copies. And I'm like, yep, 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 I get you. So my job today is we've picked a new block here. We've picked a new piece of wood. This will, where will be? This will be the top. It has grain, of course. Every piece of wood we use has grain. But we feel that this is not going to be a particularly strongly pronounced piece of grain. It will show at first. The earliest copies of the print that come out will have a faint gray grain pattern in the sky. And we feel over time that will disappear. We're not going to mention it to customers. There will be people, we've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these prints already. Simply the next batch that goes out, the green pattern in the sky will be different. We're not calling it a new edition. We have no numbering here anyway. It doesn't matter. Anyway, that's today's job. The wood is ready and I have to prepare a transfer sheet. The same as we did when we were first making the print. So they gave me the block stack. And I have to find the key block, transfer it to the new piece of wood. That's Kubota cart tie. He must have been the last one who did a batch of these. We always know when Kubota has touched something. Someone says you should be receiving your first ever prints from us this weekend. You mean, you mean if you're waiting for your cat, I don't, I don't know what you mean, I'm sorry. Or have you ordered something yesterday? Receiving prints this weekend from your post office. Or did you order something online, you know, a while ago and it's now the tracking number shows it's coming this weekend? Is that what we're talking about? Thank you. Look at this super faded copy. This is the, the block wrapping copy. It would have looked something like this. 
years ago. When did I carve this? I've got no idea. This was carved in 1999, I guess, 1998 or 1999. And this is the sheet of paper that's been used to wrap up the blocks ever since then. Sun exposure, light exposure. Okay, I gotta find the key block. Oh, Embrace the Delight series. I see, I see. So, okay. thank you. How do you know it's coming this weekend? Those usually go by airmail. They don't have tracking numbers. There's the key block we're going to need. And here's the block where we're replacing. So we're going to make a new one of these. Look at this, I only used half the block. And there's our grain pattern. And it's just refusing to die. It's refusing to go away. I can't feel it actually. You know, I said maybe the summer wood was wearing away. And that's not it. I can't feel that. It's still flat. I guess simply the, the wood winter grain is just really too hard. It wasn't a good choice of block in the first place. Anyway, that's what we're going to be replicating this morning. Oops, pull. Something pull, something push. This is what we're going to replicate. So let's keep this standing by so I've got a copy to, to, to observe. have a transfer sheet I prepared last night. So I'm going to take a quick pull from the key block on this sheet. Gives me the information we need. Oh, it doesn't give me the information we need because it doesn't have the uh, no cutoff point. I wonder if I should just replicate that one. Let's do that. Instead of printing from the key block, let me just print from this one. Just replicate the block we're using. That'll be the easiest way to do this. Let's do that. Plan B. Yeah, plain, if I just plain this, no, the grain, the grain is what it is. The grain goes right through the piece of wood, absolutely. We've tried dressing it. We used a stone to try and dress this. That, used, that, that frequently helps the problem, dressing with a, a, a Nagoda stone. Which way to go here? Which way to go? Which way to go? Now let's print, let's do a normal tracing. A normal transfer sheet. I don't have a blue brush. I don't want to mess that brush up, that block up. You're replacing it, so I could rub black, I know, I know. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> what we may end up doing, actually, this is a thing we really we do quite often. When there's a block that has bad wood grain, another way to handle it is to replicate it on a different piece of wood, which has wood grain in a different place. Then you print the thing twice, lightly on block one and lightly on block two. And the combination of the two builds up to where you want, and the wood grain on this one will be buried by the ink from the other one. So I don't want to screw this up, at least until we know we've got a completely good comprehensive pattern to replace it.
There's so many ways to handle these problems. I want to keep all, the, all as many options open as I possibly can. Make this 1998, 1999, somewhere back there. Maybe 1999. The idea was publishing it in the year 2000 because at the time copyright law in Japan was death plus 50, and he died in 1950. So I was thinking to publish this in the year 2000. I think that was the the calculation back then. I don't remember exactly. Why am I? Still wearing my mask, my God, is nobody here? Okay, that'll give me the lines I need. Now I need to find that cutoff point, and we can just do that dry right here. Where is it?
That's it. Paste her down. It's funny, you know, the, the, the block that we had almost has room for it, but there's no point in using it. It does, actually. The, the block we were using has room at the other end to do this. It would be possible to put this paper on here, glue this down, and the printer could then use this zone for it. But I'm not going to do that because it's the same bloody wood grain problem, obviously. Different shape, but it's the same piece of wood. Whatever hardness we had here is probably going to be replicated over here. That might have been plan A to try that, but I really don't think there's much point in trying it. Just get a new piece of wood. She's going to go here. It's a bit of a waste. But when you think of the waste, if it saves two, three, four, five copies that are spoiled in every printing batch, then it's no waste at all. Absolutely not. And the, the printer, Zishkalsan, she, she's not a weak printer, but she said, please, please, please fix this issue. And she's right. So here we are. Myself, I tend to just sort of bowl through them sometimes, but she's, uh, she's right to fix this. Let's get your life. I was the man who visited you with Moomin t-shirt. That doesn't make you unique, actually. <laughs> How long ago? <laughs> Yesterday's Moomin t-shirt? No. no, there wasn't one yesterday. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't in the shop yesterday at all. No, that's not true. I came down. You know, I did, I did. I came down and got, got trapped in a couple of conversations. <laughs> I wasn't assigned in the shop, but uh, twice I came down and twice I got stuck in the conversations. Young man from New Mexico slash Seattle and a, a young man from, uh, from Scotland. I think it was Glasgow. I don't remember, actually. I'm sorry. You were in May. I'm having trouble remembering that far back, but okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming by. Was I polite to you, or was I just so rushed I said hello, goodbye? I don't know. Hello, goodbye. is soft. I can feel already this block is soft. In fact, it's, it's the best possible block for this kind of a thing. We would not want to use a piece of wood this soft for anything that had small pattern work or stuff like that, because they would soon start to expand in size. But something like we're going to do here, a flat beta, this kind of wood is fine. And the fact that it's soft makes me less nervous about any wood grain coming up. We'll see. It won't be zero, but I think they will be able to. They'll be able to handle it. How's our time? Eight twenty-five. The piece of wood here is wider than we need. I didn't have a piece in the stock room upstairs that would just match this Yoshida print, of course. So this is a piece of wood that had been intended to be used for one of the upcoming, when we publish more, one of the upcoming Ukiyo Heroes prints. It's the same size as the Ukiyo Heroes or, or Hanami Cats, Sushi Cats type of print. A bit too much paste, I think, the thing. The honey is full here. Bit too much honey. Oh, it's peel time. Are we going to get a peel? Uh, I don't remember what kind of gompi this is. Let's find out. Flip a coin. Five millimeter gompi will get a peel. 
If it's a thin stuff, we won't. Place your bets. Backing sheet. It's five. Boom, boom, boom. Pulling off a bit too much of that side. Pulling off too much of that corner. Look at that. <laughs> oh, oh. I said too much, honey. Oh, put your scorecards away. Okay, 8.28, how long is this going to take us to cut? <laughs> Appeal for the ages. <laughs> What do you think about that baseball game yesterday? I can't see these glasses. So yes, it was of course way, way, way too wet. Way too wet. Too much honey on the block, just so we know what's going on there. Too much honey. And working a bit too fast, if I'd have let it sit for maybe a minute or so first, give it a chance to get more stuck, it might have worked. But uh, we worked too quickly with too much uh, honey. Now this one I want to be straight. The other outside ones can be freehand, it doesn't matter. But this one, we don't want a freehand horizon, we want a straight horizon. And I'm not 100% sure about the location, so we're going to make it a bit wide. There we go. This stuff freehand is fine because it sits in the middle of the black borderline.
this part has to be careful. Do we zoom in a bit more? Push in. I know in the shop today I'm going to be down in the, I'm on duty again today. One of the people coming in this morning has cancelled. So I've been reassigned as of last night. I've been reassigned to the shop this morning again too. So so uh, I was hoping to do work upstairs. I'm supposed to be pressing some paper for the third or fourth batch of the Hoxai prints. But I've been called into the shop today. So I think what I might do actually today is get some help, go upstairs and bring the press down here and put the press in the back room of the shop here so that I can get my work done because uh, the work I was supposed to do today was all upstairs work but I'm, I have to spend the day in the shop now so some of the people I know the, the, the shop staff we've hired you know they're whatever they, they phone, you know, they phone in and say something's come up and I can't come in today or whatever. I'm tempted to get off my lawn. These kids today. But what can you do? What can you do? It's almost an exact uh, collation with age, you know. The older the employees are here, the fewer times they book off and call and phone you and say, I can't do this. The older they are, they never do that. And the younger they are, they do that all the time. It's, you know, it's a bit, I'm generalizing, but I'm actually not generalizing how much of that is actual fact. It's a little bit anecdotal. I haven't got a, a sheet here on the wall with the actual count. But when the email comes to my box and there's a cancellation, it's almost always the younger group here. So, you know, it tends to reinforce the feeling, you know, these kids today, these kids today. Okay, there we are. The block is cut. That's it. We went around the outside. That, quote, disaster with the thing peeling off. As I said, I just didn't peel it. And I can look through the back and we've cut it in the proper place. If it had been full of delicate places to carve, then I would have had to cancel and re reprint it and start again. But this is no problem at all. Okay, here we go. Let's get noisy. Someone says, I'm sure these kids today are willing to explain the reasoning. Oh, sure, nobody just cancels. I, I forget the one 
whatever. It's either I don't feel good or something has come up and I've got to do something. It's one of those two, two things, or I have a doctor's appointment or something, you know. I'm not really grumpy, grumpy, grumpy about this. It's just, it's a thing, you know, and I, I do believe it's a thing, you know. Okay, 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 there we go. Okay, for those who don't know what's going on, it's going to get a little bit noisy now for the next five minutes or so. Uh, we have compressors and or limiters working here, so I'm going to use a hammer, but it shouldn't be too bad. If you are on a delicate setup, if you've got headphones or if you're going to deciding to go to sleep with ASMR, it would be a good time to, uh, to you know, maybe book off for a while here. It's going to take about five minutes while we clear with the chisel some wood around here. Then it'll go back to quiet work while I do the work in between to finish off the lines. And then we'll be finished with this block. So a few minutes of noise. Let's do this. Let's do this. Interesting. Young people are valuing their personal time and mental health over a job. There's an interesting point here. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. And uh, my first response to that would be that the job we have here is extremely stress-free. Uh, there's no, for one thing, the work itself is light work, very light work. The second is that there's no uh, heavy managerial pressure here. Nobody here, they're coming in happy and they're leaving happy. Nobody here is under uh, stress, as in work faster, work harder, yell at you. The lady who canceled today was going to spend a peaceful day in the shop practicing her English, talking to visitors from overseas. It was in no way a bad way to spend her day. And if she's having such difficult issues with life that something else would be preferable to this, I don't think this falls into the category of mental health over the job. I get your point, and I'm not just throwing you out the door here. I do get the point. But I don't think very much of that applies to what we're doing here. Again, I may be wrong. This is anecdotal, and I'm pulling up the anecdotes that suit my side of the argument. Obviously, this is not science. But yeah, okay, your point is taken into the, the thoughts, but, but, but I'll sort of stand by my, <laughs> I'll stand by my, my, my pop analysis of this. So, you know, so. But thanks for the comment. Yes, interesting viewpoint. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Point taken. Okay, here we go. Let's make some noise. Is the noise handling okay? I believe so. I don't know. Let me know if it doesn't. Not that there's anything I can do.
Has somebody else has got another point, or is somebody repeating whatever? Young people have more entitlement attitude that they should have the perfect working conditions. This is sort of, I'm not sure what to say about that point. This is a point, and as somebody my age who has worked in lots and lots of different environments, it's easy for me to slip into that one too. And I'm not sure if it's valid. I could say that. Man, you should have been around when I was younger. The people are yelling at you the hard work I couldn't get off until late, late, blah, blah, blah. I could pull that one and say it was worse in the old days. You guys have it easy and soft. But in one sense, that's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter. I mean, before me, back at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, kids are working at six years old, up at six, finish at midnight, <laughs> whatever. That argument sort of is always there. So I don't know how valid it is to put that on the table and say, I had it a lot worse than you do. I'm not sure what to think about that point. It's, it's a thing, absolutely it's a thing. My definition of what's normal and what should be done is absolutely different from a current version of normal and what should be done. And history points towards being the older guys saying that's the way it was done in the dark ages. It's different now. So history is against me on this one. And it's no good for me to say, man, you guys have it soft today. You should have been around in 1951 or whatever, you know. But that's still what I feel. Conversation while chiseling. Oh. But this wood is soft. It has found its only possible use as a sky. It could never have been used for something that had smaller areas carved in it. That's the thing, you never really know until you dig your chisels into it, you know. People don't fully appreciate present conditions, that's true. But you could have said the same thing about me, of course, you know. It's okay, whatever, interesting. Yeah, see, this is where somebody's talking about it. We should be able to uphold responsibility take up the things we signed for instead of running away. There's a line here. So I know the people we have working for us here, the young lady who booked off today, I'm in no way thinking, oh, this is a loser. She shouldn't be here. I actually, I really, really like the young lady. She's doing a very good job. She has a good, clear goal for her future. It's not here. She's a university, a college student who's working here as a college, you know, part-time college job while preparing for, uh, she's going to get a degree in international relations. She wants to work maybe with the United Nations, something like this. And she's actually a person I quite respect. So it may be uh, I've been a bit careless with, with my, my conversation here. I am frustrated because she turns out to be a person who is booked off more often. And she books off at the last minute, which makes it really frustrating for me because at that point it's too late to start phoning around and filling in for other people. So, yeah, is there a line here, you know, responsibility? To go back to when I was in that position, an employee of a young growing company, it, there would have been times when I woke up in the morning and thinking, you know, I'm not 100% and it really would be cool to just lie here. But there was jobs waiting. 
we had a clear rule. You don't go in when you're sick because you don't want to bring the whole house down, you know. But yeah, there were times when I got up and went to work when maybe this girl would say, you know, I just don't feel like it. I'm not going to go, you know. So there is this how far do you personally feel the responsibility, you know. It's all generalizations, I'm sorry. They're really, really hard to, uh, to pin it all down. But I do like her, actually. She's really, really doing the job well, and I think it's good for her future, too. She's learning so much here. You know? Yeah, people are saying maybe there's academic deadlines, whatever. The story I'm hearing is perhaps not the true story. Whatever, you know, I, you do what you can do, you know. Over time, you learn what each of these people are like. Of course, you know, somebody could maybe not be open with you and not quite telling the truth about why they canceled today. But over time, well, of course you learn what these people are, are like. Nobody can hide their personality over time, you know. Reminds me, there's another young lady. I, I'm going to get if I'm if I'm not careful here, we'll get the two mixed up. Another, we got a visit <clears throat> two or three days ago from a young lady who used to work here pre-pandemic. At that time, she wasn't a college student; she was a pre-college student. She was doing high school here in Tokyo, uh, and it was pre-pandemic, and she was doing high school as a as a, an online student. She wasn't actually going to classes. It wasn't because of the pandemic, it was just that she was at a very progressive school that worked this way. And she was really, really, really good. And I, we probably must have talked about her in the streams back then, I don't even remember. I'm not gonna mention her name here. It's not fair to, to talk about that. Anyway, she left us just before the pandemic. She didn't leave for those reasons. She left us to go to school, to go to college overseas in Europe. She had already spent years in Europe uh, in middle school came back to Japan to do high school. She spoke English really, really, really well with a funny, nice, interesting English accent, British accent. It was really, really, really funny. And she was, past tense, whatever, at the time I knew her, she was funny and street smart and sharp, just perfect. We just loved her so much. And we were really, really sad. You know, she was a teenager. We can't offer a career position. You know, just simply she was here as a part-time job. And she went off to Europe to medical school. And this was just before the pandemic. We all sent her off with our best wishes and, you know, come and say hello one day when you're, when you're, you know, when you've got your, your doctorship or whatever, you know. She's climbing high. She's shooting really, really high. She went to a, a university in Europe to, to enter medical college. She came back for a visit a few days ago. <laughs> she might be listening here, so I've got to be careful. I'm not going to say anything bad about it anyways, but I can find it. She came in the room where I was. I was sitting down. And I'd forget what day it was. This was two or three days ago. It's hot here. There's lots going on. I may be whatever. I, I was, you know, not stressed out. What's the word? Just there was lots and lots of stuff going on. I haven't seen her in four years. 
So I think I've probably changed my appearance if you look at my snapshot from four years ago and the snapshot from me now. And we, she came in and it's, hi, how are you doing? And you're looking fine and everything else. We chat about what she's doing and she asks if she goes about what I'm doing. But as I'm talking to her, I'm thinking, wow, this girl is once so much older, my God. And she looks so stressed and so tired. And as I was thinking this, as I'm saying the conversation with her, I'm thinking, oh my God, she must be saying exactly the same thing. Oh my God, Dave looks so much older and so stressed and so tired. <laughs> and we, if she'd have been here longer, she actually, she spent time with the other girls, the friends she'd known from here before. So with me, it was just a couple of minutes talking and then out she went. And I would have really, really liked to go for lunch with her or for dinner later on and find out deeper things about what she's doing and have this conversation. You look kind of tired. Are you okay? <laughs> See what's going on. So, and yeah, medical school. Medical school. You don't need me to tell you. I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I, I, I do know or I can guess that medical school in your first early years is a tough place. It's different from Japan. In Japan, you know, you do your hard work to get into college and then they're sort of shepherding you out. They don't want people dropping out and quitting and sullying the name of the institution. Once you're in, you're, you're just shepherded along until you're out, sort of, speaking generally. But in a Western or a European college, it's maybe easier to get in, but then, bang, the boom comes down. And I don't know, you tell me, in a typical first-year environment, in a, in a medical you know, first year of general studies with a chance to become in a medical institution, what's the attrition rate in the first year? 50%? 40%? 60 I don't know. Something very, 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 very high. And it's clear. And she, she talked about it. She knew what she was getting into, but she had no idea. She said, I had no idea it was going to be this hard. You know, way, way harder than she expected. And she's fighting through it. She's fighting through. So huge respect for her. If any, among all the young people that I know, if, if I was going to bet on who would get through this and who would do it, she'd be, uh, I'd put my money on her, you know, she'd get my backing. It'll be years, years, years. She's actually in, in the Czech, what's it called now? The Czech Republic? It's not called Czechoslovakia anymore, obviously. What's the country name? The Czech Republic. She's at a, a higher, a high, the, the top or one of the top medical colleges in the Czech Republic. So. So yeah, she, I don't want to insult her. She looked tired and stressed. She said the same thing. She said, man, I had no idea it was going to be this tough. I'm stressed out. She's back here for a break with her family before flying over there and digging into it again. You know, so. Very interesting to talk to her. I, I regret not being able to chat with her more. She'll be back. She and I have a joke, or I have a joke. I should really stop. You know, if you decide not to go that route, come back here. There's work for you here, you know. And I can't, uh, I shouldn't even say that, you know. When someone's going for a challenge that, that high, you don't want to weaken their, their motivation at all. But by letting her know that there's a, a home for her here, does that weaken her motivation? I don't know. I mean, my God, this is not medical school, you know. If you're going to choose your careers, become an internationally renowned doctor saving lives, or you can work shuffling sheets of colored paper, you know. Obviously, that's a, that's a career worth, worth fighting for, you know. I'm not ashamed of what I do, but I can't offer it to a young person like that as the most meaningful way to spend your life, you know. She's going to save lives. So we'll see. But it is, she knows that there is this thing here. If she can't do that or doesn't make it or finds the stress too much, if she chooses a different path through life, as long as we're here, there's, there's a situation for her here, you know. So somebody just noticed, we did finally change the curtain. Somebody finally noticed, or maybe they noticed a while ago, I don't know.
She did mention a couple of things that were interesting that might be worth passing on as sort of anecdotal, uh, anecdotal stories, because it's, it's an environment that I know nothing about. I don't know why she chose the Czech Republic, either the particular institution maybe is noted for something she wants to study, or simply she and her family just made sure they did not want to do this in Japan. They wanted to be at an institution where you know, you're going to learn something rather than just pass exams and go through it. I don't know the background. But she did pass on something really interesting about this. So she's in, is the Czech Republic Central Europe? Is that what it's called? It's only X years. It's not all that long before it was uh, since the days when it was under the Iron Curtain. And it was a very different kind of environment, a very different kind of place. The culture there is obviously rapidly modernized. It's now a modern country, but institutions there still have heavy roots in the previous system, like the, the Soviet systems. And she brought this up. I didn't ask her about this, but she brought it up because I hadn't thought about it. And she says many of her professors and teachers, well, for one thing, they're all male, period. She said that there's no women at that level. They're all male and they're all, you know, old. And actually she giggled about this because she said old and then she realized she's talking about people that are my age. So she laughed, ha, 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 I didn't mean you, whatever, whatever. So it's okay. So the, the teachers, professors she's got are my my age, they're their 60s and 70s, they're white dudes who grew up under uh, Eastern European communist type feeling. And she says, my God, they are hostile to her because one, she's a woman, and two, she's not white. And she says there are people there who really, really, really have trouble with this. And she's not the only one. There are other Asian students, maybe there's Chinese or something there too, well, whatever. But she brought this up, and I'm like, ooh, wow, wow, I didn't realize that. So she is working under some handicaps, and I guess she gets, and she, she again, she said this, I'm repeating, she had no help with her, uh, her stuff from the teachers. If she approaches them for help, it's like, sorry, I'm busy, you know, go away. And they are busy helping white male students. So she's under some real strong, real strong uh, handicaps here. And I know her personality. She's just saying, okay, yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you. But this obviously, clearly, really ratchets up and dials up the amount of stress that she's under, you know. So. What's somebody saying? Sadly true for certain parts of Poland. Quite backwards, not all of it, but certain parts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The inertia is what it is. And, you know, things take time to change. And uh, she's one of the people, I guess, trying to make the change. And when you put yourself in that position, you've got to be tough. You've got to be tough. You know. I know nothing about this at all. I'm just, you know, I didn't go for lunch with her, so I didn't hear all the, all the deep, dirty, dark stories. But just she outlined for me, you know. I guess I had said, you know, you, you really look tired and stressed. And she explained some of the things why this was happening. So. And I don't think, she didn't say it was because she was Japanese. She mentioned it was because she was Asian. Maybe they can't even tell the difference. This student is Korean, Chinese, or Japanese. They don't know, and it, to them it wouldn't make any difference. I don't know. So. I guess when you think about that kind of a thing, that kind of a situation, you know, I am really, can I say lucky? I'm not sure if lucky is the right word for it, but I'm lucky. I'm a minority in an environment where I've chosen to be a minority, but I can't put that on as, a, as sackcloth and ashes. I'm a minority and I'm under, under discrimination and stuff like that. Obviously, in my situation here, that's not how it works. I'm technically in the minority, but my God, I get <laughs> just whatever. If anything else, it's reverse discrimination. There's been so many cases in my life here where I've been 
helped out and encouraged and it's easier to get publicity, et cetera, et cetera, because I'm in this particular minority. So I certainly can't claim discrimination, discrimination. Nine o'clock. I was thinking I'd have, I'd have. Oh my God, I'm not even going to get this finished. I was thinking I'd be finished by eight forty-five or something. I've obviously uh, <clears throat> perhaps chatted too much. Sorry. Actually, we're going to cut that off. It doesn't matter. We're going to get the table saw upstairs and chop this off. We want to make the blocks fit the same. Pack. Oh, they are thick. Okay, so okay, so okay. In that case, I'll leave it then. All right. Okay. Okay, how far back do we want to come here? It would be nice to preserve this end of the block in case we need another piece. So I don't want to chew up too much real estate here. But the person doing the printing doesn't want to bump into it. So how much did they leave on the previous version of the block? They came down. They came down here. So let's just keep the same pattern. If, if that was doable before, it'll be doable now. That'll leave me a nice clean piece of wood. Don't destroy any wood that doesn't need to be destroyed. Lots of conversation. Oh my God, I can't follow this all. I will very much enjoy reading this. Some of Europe has turned very conservative. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the world is changing. The world is changing, absolutely. Whether she sticks with that over there and wants to be part of the change, or whether she'll cut and run, I don't know. And I don't know, I know her plans for her future. After graduation, I believe she's thinking of a future in Japan. Because I did ask her that. All this work you're doing here, you're going to get your degree, whatever, uh, five, six, seven year degree, whatever it is, from that institution in, in the Czech Republic, then, if you come back to Japan to practice medicine, is that degree recognized here? And she said, no. So I'm like, she says, what it gives me is the knowledge. She will then sit for the examinations here. So her degree per se is not recognized. The fact that she has been to college is recognized, but the degree does not transfer into a medical license here in Japan. She said she will have to come back here, spend a year in some sort of a program that touches up what Japanese specifically need to know that wasn't known over there, or maybe learning Japanese medical terminology. We didn't get in, in, into the weeds there. But she said she will, after her degree is complete there, she will have to spend a year here in, in whatever it's called, remedial work or something, or something, and then sit for the certification. She didn't seem to think it was a problem. She knows this is going to happen. She accepts that. She felt that that was just part of her normal process. If, 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 if. I'm thinking, geez, by then you're going to be 50 years old or whatever. Well, someone's saying pretty much the same in any country. Okay, yeah, good, 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 good. Seats for those exams are limited. Foreign trained doctors struggling to get certified. I don't really know any details other than that, other than that this is a thing. She knows about it. She's not going to be shocked and surprised by it when she gets there, so. And I have no idea at the moment, is Japan facing a doctor shortage down the years or is it a surplus? I have no, no background knowledge here at all. You know. Will she be welcome here or not wanted? I don't know. I would imagine there'd be short staff to show the population crisis.
look who's out. Good six, six. Sadako san. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Bit of a noisy stream here today. Sorry, banging, banging. I think that's it for the noisy stuff. It's now quiet, quiet, quiet work. You gonna come and say hello? No, there's nothing there overnight. It's been a, it's been a quiet. The online has been very very quiet the last couple of weeks. It's back to the technical explanation here. People didn't know what's going on. It's another example of the three-stage process we do here. All of these blocks get done, whether the key block or the other blocks, it's three steps. And we saw the first step was the line cutting with the sharp tool. Cuts the lines. That's stage one. Stage two is chisels and gouges, usually with a hammer. Clear away the waste wood to leave the the wood sitting by itself. We can't or shouldn't get too close to the lines with the big chisels because obviously the danger of damaging the line is too much. But that's stage two. And once that's over, the final stage three of all of these blocks is the cleanup. Uh, the bottom of the oceans, if we think about this as a continent surrounded by water, the bottom of the oceans needs to get smoothed off, not completely smooth, but take away a lot of the roughness and we then get up to the lines, and that should take us right to our time, I think. Are we going to get to watch you do a test print with it? No, I've got no pigments here, no paper, no nothing, not at all. I'm just going to throw this into the deck. 
I'm going to wrap it back up. Once I'm finished, it gets wrapped up back in the bag, and these are going to go to Ishikawa san, and she will use it for her, for her printing. She will try it out first. There's no question, it will work, absolutely we know it's going to work. And what she will do is make a decision whether to use just this new block or whether to use the old block and the new block using a double printing, using light pigment on both of them so that the various wood grain patterns would cancel out. That'll be her call. She'll show me what's going on because I'll ask her how did that new piece of wood work out. But no, I'm just going to wrap this up and throw it in the, da in, in the deck and uh, I'm done. What do you think we should do about the air conditioner setting? It's, I set the air conditioner 26 or 27, and it's been on now for nearly an hour, but we're sweating, yes, so. What do you think we should? Ah, I see, get some fresh air. I see, I see, I see, okay. Mm, I'm not worried about it. If you want some fresh air first, let's do that. Yeah, after a few minutes. Mm, okay, that's why it's hot. Soka, soka, soka. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I wasn't, I didn't realize what you were doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was wondering why I'm sweating so much with the air conditioner on, but yes, she's, she's popped the air through. Someone asked, why is it important to smoothen the oceans? Because pigment builds up. What happens is this, as it, they don't touch the paper, we rub pigment all over this area like this and pigment comes on here, and pigment also comes in the oceans. Then when we print, it's okay, only the cut area prints. But bit by bit, if there's roughness here in the oceans, pigment starts to build up here. I got that when I was printing my cat the other day. Here we are, look, you can maybe see this. If I can find a bad copy, hang on a sec. I know I had a bad one. Here, 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 here. I got that in my cat. Pigment had been building up when I was printing when I was printing the leaves here. That was the, the, the continent, and then this area was the ocean. And look at this pigment right there in front of the cat's paw. That wasn't printed together with the paw, that was printed when I printed the leaves, and pigment started to build up on a rough area there. Because I had been a bit careless and I hadn't made the bottom of the wood quite smooth enough. So whatever, 99 years of experience, not 99, but whatever, tons of experience still, and I got bit by that. And I, it went two or three prints because it was so close to the paw, I didn't catch it. If it had been out in the open, I would have seen it instantly, but I didn't notice it quickly because it was by the paw. And I lost about three or four prints from carelessness at this point right here. Eternal... Vigilance. <laughs> it's a phrase. It's a phrase. Okay, last step, get up to the line. And the final step here is to get up to the lines and throw away the very last bit of dead wood.
and that'll do it. But I don't think I have enough time to get around here before we run out of time, right? Oh, 16, it's Chantel already. Nanda, nanda. Nanda, nanda. Okay, we've, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's change over. Who's next? Who's next? Look, as always, good morning. Hey. Oh, Nanda, I, I spent too much time chatting earlier. I was supposed to finish this. Okay, no problem, no problem. You know what I'm doing. We've gone through this. You know how it's going to work. The last, going around the outside is going to look exactly like this. We are done on this block. It's going to go into production as part of the block set. Let's have a look at a show and tell book. We've missed it for two days in a row, two, two streams, three streams in a row, I think. <coughs> Okay, good news and bad news. The bad news is the show and tell object today we have actually seen before. I think years and years and years and years ago. So this is a repeat, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be too much worried about that because there's lots and lots of people here who haven't seen all these things before. Have you seen this set of them? Imayo Bijin. If Jacques Commandeur is here today, he's probably gone to bed by now. Jacques in Holland, if he's on the stream today, he knows what this is because he also has one of these, the same album that I've got. It's an album from the Meiji era. All the things I'm about to show you are actually already online in super high resolution photographs along with the description of them. So, we're going to take a peek at it now, but the information is online for this book. It's an album from the Meiji era. Uh, what do we do? Left, right, where am I? I'm Japanese here, so we're going to open from which side? Here we go. Have you seen this before? This is so cool. Come on, have a look. Come on, have a look at this. It's a set of 12 prints, and the idea, Imayo Bijin, ano. I'm not sure who the prints were aimed at, the market they were aimed at. It's a set of 12 seasonal prints. It goes through the year and it's showing like upper class people. These are not, this is not Yoshiwara. This is nothing to do with the sex world. It's simply normal women in a high class type environment. But it's in an era when Japan is changing. We've got, this is a tokomono, tokonoma, a Japanese room. This woman is getting ready something for the new year. But look what she's sitting on. Mm -hmm. She's sitting on a carpet. It's sort of un unthinkable if you think back in, the, back in the earlier times. So we're getting a glimpse of a time when Japan was changing over. At the end of Meiji. It's towards the end of Meiji. So this mm -hmm. is, what's, what's the date here? I'm sorry, what, Meiji 30. So almost 41, 19, 41. So this is already in the 1900s. 25. 19. No, 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 no. Taisho started in 1912 yeah, 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 or so. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This is about 1910 11, or somewhere around there. Yes. Yeah, 11. So, so, so. Good. And it's basically how the upper half lives. And I'm not sure who would have bought these things. The album, I guess, would have been very expensive. One again, only people with resources and money could have afforded to buy this. But the prints were also, for the most part, available one by one by one by one. But they were expensive. So would people of this genre themselves, people who lived in this environment, would they be the people who were buying this? We don't really know. Was it teaching them how to live? Were they looking for guidance on how to keep your house decorated properly or what to do during the seasons? It's really not clear who the target market was for these things. See how close we can get. They have the same style as the Meiji era Kuchie illustrations. Very, very delicate work, very carefully made, embossing all over the place. A new Year decoration to show, Sadako? This must be yeah, a, a new, so. new Year. Embossing is around here? Yeah, on the, the fabric, her whole purple kimono is all embossed. Here? Yep, you can see. Uh, wow, so delicate. So, so it's hard to see. And then the carpet is embossed. It's just embossing ah, everywhere. Ah, this is. 
Well, someone says, satisfy the curiosity of poorer people, help them mimic the high society ways. That's a nice theory, but the prints would have been too expensive. This wouldn't have been cheap stuff. Absolutely wouldn't have been cheap. Even to buy one by one in the shops, these prints would have been expensive. So it's not lower class people buying these. Maybe, I don't know, if you're gonna try and quantify the market, not, not the top echelon of people, but upper middle class, but there was no such thing in Japan at this time. Japan was learning how to have classes. We go through basically seasons. This is the second one. Of course, we've moved on now to plum blossoms, although it sort of looks like Tanabata. They're writing poetry and tying them onto the plum leaves. I've never heard of that before. I don't think so. Season doesn't but it's, it. I know, so it's not Tanabata. I mean, no, so, so Tanabata. it's plum. Some but the same which, thing. Which she's got her, she's got her... Uh, yeah, rolled. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and they're all over here. Yeah. So. Let's zoom in again. Zoom in and move it around. And the, the expense, there's just no expense spared. Look at this. We go down to her, her obi here. And look at the pattern. It's the, uh, what do you call it? Shibori zome moyo. Mm. Done all in different blocks with different gradations on each one. Yeah. It's just I can so see the depth. over the top. It's unbelievable. Mm. Absolutely unbelievable. And what have we got? Have we got a smoking set? Tea is a teacup, but is this to make tea? I don't see a kettle. The two of them have teacups. They're outside. And I think what they are, it's a commercial environment. They've sat down at a place, it's like a tea house, that has put these benches outside, and they've been served tea. And it looks to me like this is almost like a smoking set, but they don't have the, the old pipe and stuff. This is, uh, they've gone to a park or a place where there's a, a place serving tea in a park or a garden. And uh, were we looking at a woman and her maid or a woman and her daughter or just two women? I'm not sure. I don't know. The level of difference in the kimono patterns seems to me like the master lady and perhaps a maid. maid. I'm not I quite so. sure. You know, and she also the hair decorations. Together. So, that's it together. So. There's no aniline red here. This is cochineal. This is not the aniline colors. They've moved away from that by now. And this is a rich, deep vermilion pigment that we can pretty much no longer get. <laughs> they, just, they, just, they just keep rolling on. Again, to remind you, these are online in super high resolution format. You can look at them at your leisure. Get expand them on your screen and look at it. And look at this. Look what the guy's wearing. Top hat. This is really a super era when things are just blending right together. We have something that could have been traditional from a hundred years earlier, and something that is obviously the height of modern fashion. Festival preparation, I guess. Festival time. Oh yes, place to relax. You know, to whisper, mm. you can tell them. She's saying, oh, Yasumi Tokoro, a uh, resting house. There's some kind of park or festival going on. A place. Mm. And it's a place to get your drink, get your tea or, or mm. sake or whatever. You know. And I'm, I'm just in awe of this vermilion. We would love to have this color, this pigment, but we just don't. Mm. And we have, I don't know if it's going to show, we have aluminum powder. Again, very expensive and rare in those days. Aluminum to give the, the bling. And it is not showing on the camera. There is embossing everywhere, all over this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see it? The show? Nuno Mezuri. Nuno Mezuri. So. And look at the scale. Her face, it's smaller than my freaking fingernail. And we have lips, she's got teeth in there, her eyes are open, she has an expression, the hair, and it's smaller than my finger. Gradation on the kerchief, the little purple one. Why would they do that? Would the customers notice? This is the era when there are still many, many, many carvers and printers in existence. 
at this point now they're really not taking apprentices anymore because the work has disappeared. The ukiyo-e work has disappeared, but the workshops were still there. So these, these publishers grabbed this chance. It's the Kuchie era. They grabbed the chance to use these guys, but there was no ongoing work. Because by now the printing presses have taken over all of the lower level of work. So there's nothing left for apprentices, but the publishers are still using these top guns. Look at the printing on that. <laughs> the other day I showed you a print that I have from the Taisho era, and I said, if there's a fire in this building, I'm going to fight through the smoke and grab that print and walk out, stagger into the street with that one print. But you know, I think I've changed my mind. <laughs> what would I grab from this building if I could save only one thing? You know? This would be a woman and her daughter, I believe. Mm -hmm. so. And of course, they're feeding. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's showman Zuri, isn't it? So, no, no, no. The, the, the silver, yeah. yeah. Also, what's the deal here? What are they doing? I mean, we can see the action. Ofu, ofu. It's a, it's an egg. And no, 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 so it's not an egg. No, 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 no. Oh, fu, fu. We're gonna need, flour. We're gonna need some explanation here. Mm, how do they kind of wheat? Not wheat. Flour. Okay, flour. Saying, this, this isn't an egg. So it's, a, it's egg. a food ball. Can't it's not a, not rice. Oh, fu. Oh, fu. So this is from wheat flour. Wheat flour. So we're looking at just a, what a a, a a baked very light, very light. Wait a minute, wait a minute. One of those NHK programs on, I did that spiral thing on the heat and it was fluffy and very, almost weightless. No, almost oh, weightless, fu. yes, yes. You're going to have to look this up. I don't know the translation. Fu. It's not a dough ball in the sense of a heavy, boom, boom, heavy thing. It's super weightless. It's fluffed up. When I, when I was doing it as a, as a demonstration on NHK program, it was long and thin strips. It wasn't in a, in a clump. Maybe you cracked and gave... Fish, those. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it was Can't food. It was human food. It was to go into soup. So, mm. okay. Well, I'll stand corrected. Every time I've been telling people about this, I've been saying they're feeding <laughs> eggs to the fish. Whatever. It looks like an egg. <laughs> Live and learn. Live and learn. So, yeah, on the web page for this print, it might talk about this feeding eggs. So when well, we let, when let we get off the screen, later. let's go back yeah. and check. So. It won't float. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm not, not in any way hostile to your suggestion. I agree, I agree. It, to me, it didn't make sense. Like we were talking, like an egg, maybe I was thinking it was like a hard-boiled egg or something. The shell is gone, I was assuming. And she pops this into the water and the fish are just going to either fight and bite at it or a single fish is going to go and eat this thing. Didn't make sense, okay. Stand corrected. Not even a chocolate egg. Koi that size would eat anything. So they think it would eat an egg if it was there. <laughs> would it float? Would a hard-boiled egg float when you throw it in the water with no, no shell? I don't think so. It will go down to the bottom. I haven't done because, any because Can you see the light? Look, get in here. See the light? What they've done with the, with the kimono pattern? I don't know how to describe this. I'm not sure if we can get it under camera. There's an embossing pattern on her kimono that, that, that goes two ways. Let's just try and catch this. Because this is to die for. We oh, can see it. It's almost there. We can see part of her. There's an embossed pattern all the way down her kimono. And then the level of, the level of just delicate gradations everywhere. They've even put a gradation in the cartouche. Why did the people understand this, you know? So what's happening here? She's in her own garden because she's chopping flowers here, you know? Mm. You can't do that when you're out in the park. Full flower arrangement. Yeah. So this is a very, very rich person that has mm. stuff like this in their mm. own garden, my God. So this is really the, the richest of the rich type people we are seeing here. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's five. Let's look at one more. We'll save the other half of the book for later. Let's look at just one more. This is the six, six months. We're gradually working our way through the year. 
and it's uh, I don't I'm not sure if it's bonsai. It's, yes. Is it it's the actual tree or is it flowers in pots? I'm tree. not sure. You think it's bonsai per bonsai, se? Bonsai. Yes, okay. I'm sure. Okay. I, the reason I would have guessed maybe not on not officially bonsai is because to me that would that was the male pursuit, and I, the woman of the house would have been doing bonsai. She just taking care of. Care of it. Okay. Okay. We have to water twice a day yeah, for yeah, bonsai. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Look at this. She's on some kind of, uh, they look like cushions. She's outside, so they're not cushions. But they've done a different gradation and a different color on each one of these. They're kind of tiles, I guess, are they? Something in the garden, some kind of tile. Or stone. Or stone engraved. And they put a little tiny gradation on each one all the way across. And they've faded out, they've blurred out the kimono pattern. There's a name for this. I don't remember what it is. It's a, it's a classic kimono pattern. There's a name for it, I'm sorry. Kind of kasuri. Mm. And this is new for Japan. Oh what yeah, there's another one. Yes, look, look, look. We have the window, round window, but in there is a western curtain. Look at that. I didn't even notice. So, <laughs> so I guess all these pictures have this. There's this blend of Japanese stuff mixing with, with modern western stuff. So the, that's the title of the book. The title was Imayo Bijin. Imayo, yeah. Imayo, mo modern beauties. Is no, if no. you were going to try and translate and it. This is uh, from Western. Oh, a Joro, is Jodo. it? So, yeah. so. We didn't have that. So what a different shape. How were Japanese using? We did. Oh really? Shaku. With a, with a, really, 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 really. There was no such no, thing. No, no. In Edo era. Okay. So when you're watering something, it's simply with a scoop and ladle scoop and, and scoop and ladle. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's leave it there. Again, to reiterate, I gave you the link earlier. I'll put the link in again now. All of these images are on our website in super stunning high resolution. You can zoom in as far as you want. We'll look at the other half of the book in a show and tell next time. Right now, we have to get busy here in the shop. I got to finish that block and we're up and running. The plan for the next stream, next Monday's stream, two days from now, is going to be, I'm going to be in Ome. And we're going to try. And I'm going to be arriving in Ome that morning. I won't be arriving in Ome the night before, set up all the cameras on the river and the fish and get it ready. I'm going to be arriving in Ome Monday morning trying to set up the cameras, find where the fish are, get some fish food, gather them around, start my work. We're going to give it a try, but it might be a little bit of a chaotic stream. It might start a bit late. I'm, I'm not, you know, making excuses already. Just that, just keep, don't panic. If all goes well, the Monday stream will start at 8 o'clock, normal time, and you will see a view of the garden and the river. If it doesn't quite work, we'll see something else, but that's the plan. Two days from now, we have a stream, stream planned. Thanks very much. I'll see you there. My God, I'm going to have to get up at like five o'clock to get out there in time to do that. And what's this guy doing? A new workman? A wheelchair ramp? No, surely not. Delivering to the hotel, it seems. He came across the street from the hotel. Anyway, not our business. We should just shut down and get going. Thanks for watching, gang. I'll see you in a couple of days in a completely different environment. See you there. Thanks very much, and bye for now.